This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll be making a 3D buttercream violet cake design. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's make the colors for our 3D violet cake. We're going to make three of them, and we're going to use the following liquid gel colors. Coal black, lemon yellow, royal blue, and finally some violet. In my cup I've got American style buttercream and I've got a little more of this one. We're going to use it to cover our small cake and also do some center details to our flower. So it's going to be kind of a light mossy shade. So think a little more yellow than blue when we're making our green. So I'm just going to start with my lemon Nice little healthy specks there. Really get some, some color in there. We want to make kind of a, a, I want to think of it as like a medium shade. So much more yellow than blue. And we're going to give it just a touch of black. And if you want to make those nice kind of mossy, earthy colors, a little touch of black or a little touch of something like some Buckeye Brown is a great way to do it. Let's mix it around, see where we're at, and adjust based on how we look. For me right now, that blue is really showing through. So maybe want to go a little heavier on my yellow and potentially give it a little more black. Let's see what that does. So you can see how adding the yellow kind of changes the balance of the color. It definitely, as far as the green goes, reads more yellow than blue now. Sometimes that royal blue, it can be very potent. So even though you're using smaller specks, it can still feel like it does a little more of the lifting when it comes to the balance of the color. And I like where this is going. I think I just want to take it just a tiny bit further. We're going to make a darker green that is going to be the leaves and the stems. So I want to make sure that they're really kind of far apart from each other. And that one will really pop against the other. A little more yellow, a little more black. And I think that should do it. I think that's going to be a great shade for the background of our cake and also for the centers on our little violets. It should pop against the purple and we'll make another shade of green that should really read well next to this one. For a second shade of green, we're going to make kind of a medium toned forest green. So you can see I've got some American buttercream in the bowl. It's not a very big cake we're working with, so it's not a lot of buttercream. But this one, we're definitely going to go with a healthy dose of that black some of our yellow, and then really heavy on that blue. So we want to make it more intense in terms of value, but also we want the balance to be more blue than it is yellow. So kind of the opposite in terms of how we're approaching the color and making it. We want to make a nice forest green kind of color. So we want to start with more blue than yellow. And this one is giving me more dusty teal right now. So it'll probably need a little more yellow and a little more black maybe. And then we'll be right in the right territory. So let's just give it a little more of that yellow and a touch more black. And this should give us a nice shade that's kind of like a light version of forest green. It should really read well against that kind of mossy green that had very yellow vibe to it. So they should really pop next to each other, even though they're both shades of green. 
and the whole thing should look really nice with some little light purple flowers. So there we go. So nice kind of light shade of forest green. You can see if we kept going with the same ratio, we'd end up with that nice deep dark forest color. Our final color is going to be some violet. So we're going to grab some purple. Tiny touch of blue. And then finally, just a little bit of that black. We want to kind of give everything that same beautiful, slightly muted vibe, but we don't want to make this gray, which can happen very easily with your purples. And this color might come together really quickly. So we don't really need a lot of purple. We're only making some tiny little blossoms for this and we won't need very many to go around our cake, but we do need enough so that we can actually get a hold on the bag. So just a little bit should do. And I think I'm just gonna go a little bit more purple. And then just a tiny, tiny touch of that black. And we should be good. This is looking beautiful and it really looks like it's gonna pop nicely against those colors that we made for our background and our leaves. They're kind of slightly more intense. We've got a nice kind of beautiful light periwinkle shade for our violets. For this project, we're going to use four 12 inch disposal decorating bags. You can see I have one with my dark green and my violet fitted with a coupler because we'll be changing tips on those two bags. The other two are fitted directly with the tip. Our first bag of dark green is fitted with a coupler and we'll be using it with tips number five and three. Our second bag of dark green is fitted with a large oversized tip that's directly in there. It's a number 125. So you can see it's a straight opening on that large petal tip. Our bag of purple is also fitted with a coupler and we'll be using it with a number 59. This one is a curved petal tip, so it has a slight little curve to that tiny opening and we'll also be using it with a number 102. This one is a similar size opening, but it's straight. And our final bag of moss green we'll be using with a number one tip. Let's review the techniques that we're gonna use to create our 3D violet cake. And the first ones we're gonna go over are some petals with our 59 tip. So that's our little curved petal tip. And we're gonna start with some rounds. And this is a lot like a teardrop petal, except we're not really pulling out very much. We're almost kind of spinning in place. So you wanna think about the back end, that fat part being almost fixed. It's not really gonna travel around a lot like it would when we're piping a teardrop petal. And I'm gonna start with the back of the bag at 130, bags like at 45 degrees. That fat end is fixed towards the center and the skinny end is going to be rocked up off it and that's going to give our petals a slightly cupped shape. And the more you rock it up, the more cupped they'll be, the closer it is to being flat, the flatter they'll be with just a little curve on the edge. But the basic thing here is we want to start squeezing. We don't really need to pull out very much and we're just going to uh, spin the nail. In this case, I'm trying to spin the tray, which doesn't very, go very well. But the idea is to get petals that are almost rounded on the top. The back end really won't be, but we want a nice kind of round shape to the tops of them, right? And then we're gonna pair that with some elongated petals. And for these, I typically have the back of the bag kind of towards my right shoulder. And we're going to do a bit like a teardrop, but more exaggerated. We're really gonna push out and then pull back quickly. So it's a bit like the petals that we do on a dahlia. And we just want really quick, beautiful, elongated petals that have a little bit of cup to them. So I'll just pull it up closer so you all can see. So we're doing two different shaped petals with the same tip. So it's mostly about how we hold it, how we're moving it on our flower nail to create the different styles of petals that will combo together to make our little violets. 
We're also gonna make some buds on the side of this cake. So a lot of times violets, it's just like a few petals and they're starting to unwrap and untwist. So I thought it would be nice to practice some of our J-shaped petals to make these. So for these, we're gonna start, imagine as if you're starting on the outside of the edge of the petal and then pulling towards the back. And we want the fat end touching the skinny end just above the surface and we're going to be doing these directly on our cake so where we position the bag will change greatly um, and we just want to squeeze so we get a nice little wedge forming and then pull back and you can see that gives us this kind of wedge shaped petal it's fatter on the outside edge it tapers towards the center and it's a little up off the surface and what we're going to do is just kind of layer them up a little bit to give a nice little effect like we've got a little bud going there so i'm just going to do a second one a little further back and right on top of it and it's going to give us the look of a kind of like petite unfolding petals like maybe we're viewing those little buds from the side and I'm just gonna hold it up really quickly so you can see what's going on. So it's just two of those J-shaped petals layered on top of each other to create the effect of a bud on our cake. For our centers, all we need to do are two small dots right next to each other with our number one tip. So because the tip is tiny, we're just gonna be barely hovering above the surface. Give it a quick little squeeze and finish it off. And then go right next to it and do the same thing. So very tiny, oh, there we go, two little dots. Right in the center of our grouping of petals will do the trick. For our leaves on this one, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do some kind of spade shaped leaves and we're gonna be using our large number 125 tip. And I wanna imagine that there's kind of a center line to my spade shape and that's where the back of that tip is gonna be. The skinny end will point towards the outside edge and we're gonna do these on our flower nail and you just wanna start out and just wriggle as you rotate your nail to a point and then we're gonna come back the other direction. So it's a lot like when we pipe flat leaves with our 104 tip and we want to make them kind of variegated a little harder to trickier to do on the tray but you can see we get a nice spade shape to those leaves and they're big and they're broad and they look like they have little lines going out of them because we've done our little wriggle for the stems we're going to use a number three tip and we'll be drawing lines on the side of the cake so a little different than if you're doing the top of the cake or writing where you can just let those lines drop down we're going to do the 45 and glide so we want to touch the surface bag at a 45 degree angle back end is pointing towards whatever direction we're going to be pulling to pipe in and we just want to go right above the surface or just skim on it with your tip and if you get an air bubble don't worry about it you can always fill those in so you just want to glide above the surface <laughs> got a batch that's got a lot of bubbles let's see if we can get this to work there we go and that should give you a really nice line right we don't want to smash into it with the tip if you try holding the bag kind of straight or perpendicular to the surface you're going to dig into the surface of your lines with your tip so you want to make sure when you're piping on the side and you're trying to get nice smooth lines really angle that bag so the frosting can flow out freely. If we hold it like this, we'll smash our little lines. And finally, we're gonna make some pill shapes. These are gonna create kind of little caps on top of some of the half buds, half buds and blossoms that we're going to do. So we wanna just start bag perpendicular. We wanna be up off the surface like you would for a dot. So same distance, we're using that number five tip. So more than when we use our one tip, and we want the frosting to balloon out, and then we're just gonna continue moving. Same distance from the surface, just to the side, until you finish the desired length, then you stop and pull back on itself. And that gives you almost a fat, chunky little line there, we can see, that's gonna make a great little cap for the tops of those little buds and make them look finished off and kind of connect everything to the stems flawlessly. 
Now let's review how we're gonna combo the little techniques we used to build this violet. And if you want a more in-depth lesson on our violets, we actually already have a tutorial for just the violets in our flower series. So you can always go over and check that out if you need a little more information or a little bit more detailed explanation. But it's pretty simple. We're going to start out and pipe three of our elongated petals. And a lot of times I like to start with the one in the middle, do one on the left and one on the right. And then we're going to spin our nail around and pipe those two round petals on top. So you wanna think a little bit like it's bisected. And if it looks a bit to you like it's got, I don't know, a head and some tentacles and it's got a little bit of an octopus vibe going on, that's perfect. We wanna make sure that we leave little gaps here uh, so that visually it reads like a flower that has these two very different round petals up top and these three very different elongated petals on the bottom and that's really going to give you that nice little violet vibe right and once we're done with those two sets of petals we'll finish it off quickly with two little dots there in the middle and that'll really help differentiate them as well we're going to start making our violets and i'm using my small two inch flower nail because these are petite flowers so they're not even going to take up the whole area notice my paper is a little smaller and i've also got my little template that's divided into thirds. And that's gonna help me visualize a little bit where I want that top area to be and help me leave some gaps. And I'm gonna start with my elongated petals and you can do one in the center and do one on each side or you can work just over in one direction. Whatever is easiest for you and allows you to pipe your petals without messing them up. So I'm just gonna start with my one off to the left, do my center and then do my right, but you can do it any way you like. And I've got my fat end kind of down there and my bag to the back. And I'm just going to oh, long pedal, push a long pedal, and push a long pedal. So you can see I've got three of those cute little elongated cupped pedals kind of all lined up next to each other. They're really nice and tight. There we go, get them nice and lined up. Now I'm going to spin it around and it's same bag, back end is up towards 130 and I'm just gonna try and get my two little round ones, one over on this side and then a second one over on that side. And I'm gonna try and make sure I leave a little bit of a gap there to kind of make a nice difference between the two. So I'm gonna start squeezing and then I'm just gonna spin the nail. So you wanna think about it like start with the fat into the tip in the center and move it over to the left just a little bit to get that started. So just squeeze and turn and that should give you one on the left side. And then if we line up with the center and come over a little to the right, that should give us one to the right side. And you can see now we've got a cute little violet. We've got those petals up top and down below. And we'll finish them off with some dots. So to finish them off, I'm just gonna go in with my little moxie color green, my number one tip, and two nice little dots there, and we have some adorable petite little violets. I'm probably gonna make five or six of these to place on our cake. Now let's make some large leaves on our nail. We're probably gonna to wanna to pipe at least three or four to complete our design, but you can always make a few extra for yourselves. It's great practice and it ensures you have them if you need them. So I'm just going to get set up here. I'm gonna pipe a longer leaf. So I wanna start away from the center and I just wanna go out to the edge and back. And the faster you do it, the skinnier those lines will be and just pull up to a point. Beautiful. And then oh, start up at my point. And come out and you can see if you keep spinning, you can kind of fan it out back past there. And that gives me a nice, beautiful kind of spade shaped leaf to go with our beautiful violet blossoms. So we have a petite cake prepared for our project. It's a little four inch round that's two layers. So nice and small and sweet. And we're gonna coat it with 
our beautiful mossy green color. And this one has already been coated in white and has been chilled, so it's nice and firm, so it's gonna be easy to coat with a layer of color. And we'll just get it around the top, just exactly like I would if I'm icing the cake in white, but just much, much thinner. This way, you end up using less food coloring. So once I get the top all nice and smooth, I'm just gonna go over the sides, and this is really just pretty easy to do. Just load up your spatula, kind of full length, and just start working it back and forth. Gentle motion, gentle pressure. Anytime the amount of color gets too thin, you start to run out, just load up your spatula a little more. And since we're a really petite little cake, it's gonna be easy to make quick work of going all the way around and that little bit of moss colored buttercream we made is just more than enough. So we still have some leftover to do some details with. And I've done this a lot. If you haven't, it might take more than one pass. So don't be afraid to use your refrigerator if you need to. If you've got any kind of like ghosting or show through, any little thin spots where you can still see that white you can go ahead, pop it in the fridge, let it chill, and then go over it with a second pass. But it's pretty easy to get that on there with my spatula. Just use my bowl scraper. Gently helps to push things in any gaps or air bubbles. It's got a little more flex to it. And then I'll use my bench scraper this one's a nice, sturdy, inflexible. It's gonna give you a great little right angle. Just gently sweep it around the sides of those cakes and you can see you get a nice, beautiful straight edge on that. Then for the top, we've got a little buildup. We just wanna quickly get rid of that. Use that little small offset spatula, just angle the blade so that you can kind of see the bottom. Think at it like a nice little 45 degree angle open towards yourself and just sweep gently towards yourself and use the motion of the turntable too. That's going to help get nice little gentle passes and get a nice little level top on there. So smooth top, smooth sides really, really quickly. While we're waiting for our flowers and our leaves to chill, we've got them in the fridge so they're setting up. We're just going to gently mark the sides of our cake and kind of prepare it for those little piped details that we created. So I just wanna mark some nice little curving stems, get myself some cute little clumps on here of my little violets, and I just wanna kind of space them out a little bit, make them bend various directions, and just kind of have a little bit of fun playing and creating a nice little design for the side of my cake. And I'll probably do three little groupings. They don't have to be too big. Those violets aren't too big, but we're just gonna set ourselves up so we have an easy little line to follow that's just lightly scored into the side of the cake with our number three tip. We've got our little lines marked. I've got my bag of dark green fitted with my number three. And we just wanna remember, go at like 45 degrees and you can start at the bottom of the line or the top, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Sometimes depending on the way my lines go, I feel more comfortable doing one versus the other, but it makes it very easy just to pull these little lines right here on the side of my cake. and get this surface ready so that we can place some of those cute little flowers and leaves that we made. So just go around and pipe on top of all those little markings you made and we'll be ready to start with the fun part of decorating. If you get any little pops, bumps, or wiggles, don't worry. You can just remove any less than desirable areas with your toothpick and just go ahead and repipe them. And if you need to, you can always let it chill in the refrigerator and then go back and fix it. So you can see we got a little bit of a pop right there, a tiny little air bubble. I'm just gonna go in and make sure 
that it's all connected. And you can just gently little fix that line. It's not a big deal, right? Don't worry too much about pops and little bubbles. If something flicks over to the side, just remove it with your toothpick. Just gently lift it off of the surface in a way. It's really easy to do and shouldn't take too much time. There we go. So now we have three little groupings that are ready for leaves and violets. So I'm gonna pick a grouping and I'm gonna start working. And I'm just gonna start with my leaves, peel one off, and just see how I like the placement. And if I need to, I can always Just remove a little bit to make it fit better. So not a big deal. I just use my palette knife and just slice off a little bit, just so it's not covering up too much of my little stems there. Cute, nice little leaf going on on the bottom. I'm going to give myself a little dab of buttercream on the top of two of my stems. You just right there. Just use a little bit of extra, nice and tiny. We don't need too much. Our little violets are really petite. So we just wanna go ahead and stick those on and they don't all have to be quite at the same angle. So just make sure you give yourself a lot of nice little kind of variation. Make them kind of tilt this way and that. And that's going to give you a nice little effect, kind of like they're drooping over. And over here, I want to do those cute little buds that we practiced. So remember our little J-shaped leaves? And we're just going to pipe a couple on top of each other. So just really quickly. And then I've got my number five tip on my dark green now. And I can go ahead and just pipe a nice long pill right on top of there. And you can see that gives us the feeling of a cute little clump of violets. And if you want more stems, if you wanna add more leaves, you can go ahead and add more detail on these. We're gonna keep working around our cake, add some little blossoms, some buds, put on some leaves, and then we'll come back and show you our finished violet cake design. So here you have it. We have a cute little violet spray covered cake. We utilized a few quickly piped leaves and just a couple of those quickly piped blossoms. And we've added on just a few little buds as some little finishing touches, just to give it a little more realistic feel. And you can see it's a really simple, easy design that's pretty quick to execute. And it's kind of perfect for any nice little spring occasion in which you might need a cute flower covered cake. If you enjoyed this lesson, we hope you check out some of our other 3D flower tutorials, like our great camellia covered cake. Or if you're interested in just learning how to make some blossoms, you can check out any of the great videos in our flower series. We also have one on just doing violets, but there's some other fantastic ones like making dahlias. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.